Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone Our honourable guest, Brother Mustafa Akil, Dr. Muhammad Farid Muhammad Shahran, Dr. Zulkifli Ahmad and Datin Paduka Cik Asma Ibrahim First and foremost, I would like to thank everyone for allocating your time to attend this event This event is org jointly organised by Islamic Renaissance Front and G25 The primary definition of conscience is a human being's awareness and understanding of his or herself. The definition of freedom of conscience, however, is freedom of thought, belief and religion. This concept has been delineated in Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. This article then cites examples of these freedoms. Among them are the freedom to change one's religion and the freedom to manifest one's religion. The way in which one should be able to manifest his or her religion is also explained. Either alone or in community with others and in public or private and in teaching, practice, worship and observance. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Datuk Rizwan Kushari to deliver his speech. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. To our esteemed guest, brother Dr. Mustafa Kiyol, who I said came all the way from Boston and still recovering from the trip. <laughs> uh, Dr. Muhammad Farid Muhammad Asharan. Um, Mr. Esan Shahwahid from RF. We are here today to discuss on a very controversial issue of freedom of conscience and freedom of religion. This particular issue has created so much debate and controversies in the past and is still a controversial topic today. Let me start by saying that one of the greatest gifts that Islam has provided to human civilization is the ac acknowledgement of humans as dignified beings to even a higher position than the angels. Islam liberates man from any form of nonsensical, superstitious beliefs, magical, mythological, animistic natural cultural tradition opposed to Islam, unjust authorities and hegemonic indoctrination through the acknowledgement of human intellect and human dignity. This recognition which comes along with the responsibility as a vice vice garden on earth could never have been acknowledged without some special rights. Amongst them the freedom of conscience. But today, as Islam moves with the tides of history, many ideas and principles of Islam have evolved. The modern state has become a standard of today's governance and somehow muddle the intricate relationship between the concept of faith, individuality and society. To some point, it seems as if the foundation of religion has changed from indi individual faith through conscience into a collective submission through forced conviction. We in the G25 and RF believe that values like freedom and justice are the most important aspect of Islam and should be upheld by every one of us. The freedom of conscience and freedom of religion included. Chapter 2 verse 256 of the Al-Quran clearly stated this principle of freedom of religion. There shall be no coercion in matters of faith. This thing has now become the right way, the way of error. Hence, he who rejects the powers of evil and believes in God has indeed taken hold of a support most unfailing which shall never give way, for God is all-hearing, all-knowing. 
Our Quran also gives a clear choice to human to choose between right and wrong and say the truth has now come from your sustainer let then him who wills believe in it let him who wills reject it Al Quran chapter 18 verse 29 the best way to convince people about the truth of Islam is by way by using the way that was prescribed by Al Quran itself that is call down all mankind unto the sustainer's past with wisdom and goodly exhortation and argue with them in the most kindly manner for behold the sustainer knows best as to who strays from his path and best knows he has to who are the right guided chapter 16 verse 125 not by coercion or imposing people to do good and at the same time depriving them to do wrong our honorable guest, Brother Mustafa Agyol has written a good commentary on the concept of freedom to sin in his book, Islam Without Extremes. I, I believe he will elucidate us on his brilliant point on the issue of faith, liberty and cohesion in Islamic thought. Given that we live in a Muslim majority country, which has a long history of governance based on feudalistic order, it's normal for us to be in a comfort zone to assume that we could and should impose our belief and our moral values via regulation and coercion. Thus, the idea of freedom had become an alien concept, even though it is one of those fundamental principles of Islam and was clearly stated in our holy scripture. The idea of freedom, hence, is being seen as a threat to our complacency, given that we are so used to govern everything based on power, imposition, and regulation. But the religion of Islam is built upon knowledge, hujah, and true conviction. Hence, this forum, I hope, we could discuss further about the idea of freedom of conscience and to and try to find the answer to the question of whether or not freedom of conscience would actually open the floodgate to apostasy thank you thank you uh, dr rizwan uh, for your information today dr uh, dr zukifli will not join us uh, for a certain reason uh, and uh, now I would like to pass uh, this event to Brother Muhammad Ehsan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Chairperson, uh, and our friend, uh, Sister Afika Sikipi, for carrying this session. Dr. Rizwan, Dr. Mustafa, Dr. Farid, Dr. Khan. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're still waiting for the arrival of another speaker. Latin for the Chiasma Ibrahim. Dr. Rizwan has explained in quite detail about the topic of our discussion today. In fact, started with this discussion itself may be controversial in nature. I think this sense is also shared with our uh, participants and everyone who attended our session and our discussion today. We have a, a full fact all to understand more about uh, the topic of uh, freedom of conscience in Malay uh, and thus freedom of conscience opens the floodgate to apostasy indeed it can be a controversial topic if we try to understand it that as a foundation we know that as human being maybe one of the most fundamental aspects which makes us unique compared to other beings in the whole world is the cost of freedom of conscience Based on conscious, we have the right to choose what is right, what is wrong, and how do we act based on this decision would affect not just our own life, but also the life of others, and also the situation of nature itself. You can see that how human decisions, based on the conscience and the freedom that each and every individual has, everyone can make their own decision and make changes. And in some ways, it also caused the development of 
poor world. However, understanding the situation in Malaysia, or maybe as well in a lot of other Muslim countries, despite we understand that individual conscience is important, this thing that we call the collective conscience is also something we tend to dominate society. And what we mean by collective conscience is something which uh, is dominant, which shapes the structure and the condition of a society, and Islam maybe because of its fundamental principle itself is quite strong and also has the tendency to shape society has also become quite dominant. Based on a strong collective conscience, it could also affect in some ways limitations to freedom. And because of when there is some kind of contestation, issues related to freedom and liberty, related to conscience and religion can become controversial. And this is not a new issue. Over the last 10 years, or maybe even more, but over the last 20 years, freedom of conscience is being associated to the thing which we call apostasy, people changing religion. It's not just about individual religion, it can also affect the situation of society. And I think based on this brief introduction, it is a good start for us to understand deeper and discuss the whole topic about freedom of conscience and whether it opens the floodgate to apostasy. So the speakers for our discussion today, I will start with a brief introduction. Brother Mustafa Kiel, welcome to Malaysia again. Uh, Brother Mustafa, he's a journalist and an author. Uh, his, back, uh, his study background is in political science and history at Bogazici University. I'm not sure whether I got the pronunciation right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good? Okay. He's also a columnist at the Hurriyet Daily and Al Monitor, and also uh, the New York Times. He has written several books, most notably Islam Without Extremes, a uh, Muslim case for liberty, and even the more recent one is on the Islamic Jesus, which is also a good thing for me to say tomorrow we're going to have a more detailed discussion on, the, on this topic, on this book. Um, he's now a senior visiting fellow at the Freedom Project at Wellesley, Cl at Wellesley College in Massachusetts uh, in, in, in the United States. I think with that uh, brief background, I would like to pass the floor to uh, Brother Mustafa to give his talk.